In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Mindstealer Spheranx for Warcry. And don't forget, this is a centerpiece model, so there'll be a few more colours and steps than usual. Okay, let's get going with this Mindstealer Spheranx model. So the first thing we've done is we've primed it in black, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Uh, dry brush it with some Stegadon scale green, but what you can see there, the brush isn't totally dry, so it's still picking up a good bit of paint there. I'm using a makeup brush, um, nice cheap, and it's a soft makeup brush as well, which gives me this real quick way of getting this Stegadon scale green base on. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to the makeup brushes as well. So you want to do this all over, uh, including the kind of the fur on the back and kind of down the tail as well. Make sure you get the insides of the legs and then if you run out of paint just pop a bit more on, wipe most of it off on a, I use a kitchen towel, and then just work it all the way around the model uh, till you get that nice kind of differentiation but you still got black in, in some of the recesses. Okay so work your way around the model, get that done, make sure you get all the, the claws in as well. You can see it's a healthy amount coming off the brush but it still leaves those recesses black. So work your way around all the model, get that done, and we'll come back ready for the next stage. The next thing we're going to do is then take some Sotec Green, and we're going to dry brush this again. And you can probably see from the brush, I've still got some of that uh, Stegadon Scale Green in there. Uh, and all I'm going to do this, now I'm going to look for the raised edges. I'm just going to flick that Stegadon Scale Green. You can see it's really starting to pop off the model. Uh, sorry, the Sotec Green and it's leaving the Stegadon scale green in those recesses. So just work your way across the model exactly the same way as we did with the first. Make sure you get in all that fur. And you can see it's really starting to pick up some of that muscle tone now, which is exactly what we want, it's really nice. So work your way all the way around, get in this Sotec green over everything. You can see I've left the face black, and that's because it's gonna be a lot lighter. Uh, but we just want to work it around, make sure we've got all the darker colours in those recesses. And then we'll come back in uh, with the next highlight. The next highlight is going to be with Temple Guard Blue. And again, just using the same brush, not washed it. And you can see then that will start to pick up those edges. And it really starts to brighten the model. And don't worry if it's a little chalky at the moment or it comes out that way, which you get all the hair as well. Uh, because we're going to be fixing that and going in and doing a bit more detail. Right now it's looking quite coppery, but we're certainly getting those big colours that that really do look nice. Uh, so work away around the model, don't forget the tail, kind of the front claws and the bits of fur. And then we'll come back and we'll start to focus on the the kind of fur necks before we start to tie the whole thing together nicely. Up next we're going to focus a little bit more on the the kind of hair or the fur of the the spheranx. So got a bit of celestial grey. I'm just going to heavily dry brush this all over the kind of the fur areas. And I've switched to a smaller dry brush. Still a still a makeup brush. But just want to work in where we've got those little bits of fur so you can see it's really brightening the model up in some places and that's fine again what we're doing is we're going to tie it all together later on I say later on quite soon actually so work your way around the model all the kind of bits of fur that you've got there that you want to be white you can see you've got some nice transitions going on there to to the kind of bluey greens just get the white on there, the celestial grey, to pick up that, and then we'll come back. We will highlight it later so that it actually then starts to pop out a little bit um, and looks really nice, really effective. So work your way around, get all those bits of hair covered in the celestial grey. Don't worry if you go onto the, the body too much because, you know what, it's all going to blend together really nicely uh, before we're finished. To tie all this together... We're going to take some Achellian green contrast paint and we're just going to pop this all over the model or all over the bits that we've just 
uh, dry brushed up. Now you don't want this to pool anywhere, so keep moving it around the model. And make sure you get it into all the bits, even that kind of celestra grey. And as this dries, it'll just increase the vibrancy. So where it was looking a bit down and chalky before, this will tie everything together nicely, make sure everything is blended the way we want it to be blended, and it'll just take away the chalkiness. So like I said, all the way around the model, make sure it's all blended in, even the, the lighter hair bits, uh, because we're going to work on them a bit uh, separately. We're just using this kind of like a, a wash for those. So work it all the way around, make sure it's dry, you're probably going to give it 20 minutes to make sure that it's completely dry before we kind of come back in and start uh, lightening everything up again. But you can see straight away it's starting to really, really bring everything out to make the model pop. So I'm going to finish this off off camera and then when we come back we'll start looking at how we brighten it all up and give it those sharp lights that the, the box art has got. Once that Achelian green is fully dry, I just want to just take some Celestra Grey and just reinstate it using, you know, dry brush along the kind of the bigger chunks of fur that we've got on the animal. Now make sure your dry brush is totally dry, make sure the model is totally dry. Uh, because otherwise potentially you're going to make a little bit of a mess so just work your way around everything reinstate that celestra gray a little bit don't worry if it's too thin because what we're going to do is we're going to work our way around with the brush to kind of reinstate some of these thinner bits of hair just kind of here um, so work your way around get all that done and then we'll come back um, and we'll start the kind of more traditional brushwork next. So the first colour we're going to go back to is the Temple Guard Blue. And what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight all those areas following the kind of the box art. So we've got things like the, the ribs here. And you can see it just stands out nicely against the the work we've already done. And what you'll find is as you kind of let that paint dry it'll start to, to blend in again and what we're looking for is just kind of these raised areas with all the joints so just want to reinstate that temple guard blue just to give it that that pop that you can kind of see on the box art so all the kind of the most raised areas and we go fairly quickly through this as well you can see it's not taking me too long to to reinstate some of these some of these parts, you just want to take your time, make sure you've got a good point on the brush. As ever, I'm using my Windsor & Newton brushes, again I'll pop a link to these in the description in case you want to pick some up yourself. So all I'm going to do is just work way around the model, looking for all this kind of raised bits of musculature. In general, just following that box art, making sure that I'm not uh, missing any bits that I should, shouldn't be missing. And then essentially what we'll do is we'll come back and We'll have a look at just popping one last highlight on there to make it really, really shine. Okay, so work your way around the model. Don't forget all the kind of the feet, the claws, just giving it that nice highlight. And all I'm doing is following the kind of the shape of the model. I'm not uh, forcing it in there. I'm not having to make sure I've got really steady brush hand. I'm just following the, the design in there. Okay, so get that done and we'll come back and we'll just pop one more highlight on it. So you can see it's really starting to pop now. Uh, and the last uh, kind of highlight colour we're going to use in here is a little bit of Fenrisian grey. Now we want to use this really sparingly and, and just, so if you look at these ribs here, all we're doing, tip of the brush, we just want to try and get a really nice kind of thin line. So it leaves some of that Temple Guard blue in there. And we just want it on the kind of the highest points. So we've got the hind quarters here. So a little bit there like that. So a little bit in there. You can see I'm not putting too much on. This is just kind of like a spot highlight where you're going to get the, the kind of most light reflecting. And then as it dries, it'll blend back down. 
just see on that back leg there it's looking really really nice so work your way around the rest of the model do exactly the same thing so a little bit of fenrisian gray dot just in those sharpest places where that light's going to reflect from and then we'll come back and we'll start to work on this mane here next up we're going to work on the fur so get some celestial gray on your palette and what we're going to do is we're looking to follow all these little bits here and then we've got growing down the model where we've got these bits here which want to paint in the tips so this part might take a little bit of time but it's okay you can go fairly quick just be careful not to get uh, any celestial gray over the bits you've already finished like i have a little bit there that's fine and you just basically on on these bits here which are the bits you've dry brushed celestial gray these are the big chunky bits so what you can do is find the edge and just run the brush over like i am there and you can see there that's taking me you know seconds to work my way through through these bits here so take your time you want to get a a good covering of the celestial gray in there because what this does it tricks the eye into thinking there's a a lot of volume in some of these shapes um so there you are you just work your way around with the celestial gray across all the bits of hair like i said it may take you a little time but it's really worth it for the effect you get make sure you've got a good point on your brush and what i'm doing is i'm painting along the hair towards the end so where the brush stops is where most of the paint will be so by doing it this way i'll have thinner paint towards the the start of the hair which just helps it blend in with the model a little bit better okay so i'm going to finish the rest of this hair we'll come back with the final highlight and then we'll start to move on to some of the the more fun colors so with that celestial gray highlight you can see some really nice depth and volume to the kind of hair or fur on the model and the other thing i want to do is with this one is we just want to while we've got that celestial gray out we just want to paint the the head as well so make sure your celestial gray is nice and thin as you can see there it's covering okay but i'm probably going to want a couple of coats so just work it around there and you can see there it's starting to to not cover very well so just make sure that you uh take your time let it dry and then go in and give it a second coat you can highlight some of these uh, little bits of hair on there as well so i'm going to do that put a couple of coats on then we'll come back and have a little look at the pinker areas of hair next once again i'm getting excited and ahead of myself we still haven't quite finished that fur so what we want to do is just take a little bit of white scar and all we're looking to do is just kind of like the bottom half we're just looking to catch a little bit on there so you can go through this fairly quickly because you're just looking for that bottom edge and in most instances you can kind of use the shape of the model and this just adds that final bit of light that last bit of volume to the to the fur so just work your way all the way around just catching those bottom edges or second half of the fur that's hanging off you can see there it's starting to to help it jump out a little bit which is really what you want it really kind of adds to the volumes that we've we've kind of sketched in and tricks the eye a little bit okay so finish that off and then we'll come back and then we'll get on to the pink hair bits so that hair and fur is looking really nice uh, really contrasts nicely against the body of the animal now so let's have a look at doing the pink bits so we've got the end of the tail here and then we've got these braids running down there so what we want to do, we want to base everything to start with in Screamer Pink. So just take your time and work that on there. Now Screamer Pink is a base coat, so you may be able to get away with just one. I'm probably going to give it two, just to make sure. And if you're not sure which bits are going to be pink, then just check out the box art. Uh, if you check out the box art, you can kind of see. Now what we've also got here... I'll show you on the tail we've got a little bit of a blend where the, the tail goes into the pink. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to water some scream of pink down, wipe most of it off my brush. And I'm just going to start kind of there on the tail, just work it back 
towards the tail and you can see there that that's just working it in there nicely then wipe the paint off your brush so you just got water on there and then you can blend that bit there and if you need to blend it a bit more then just go back in and work work around it uh, using the colors we've already used so i'm going to finish off painting this bit finish off the braids and we'll come back and start to shade and highlight with the screamer pink down i'm going to shade it a little and the color we're going to use for that is drakenhof nightshade so the reason i'm using that a blue color on it is because it just kind of ties it into the the theme of the model and gives it that um same kind of basis so real simple stage, all we're doing is we're just taking the Drakenhof Nightshade we're just moving it around all the areas that we've painted Scream of Pink. So we've got the tail and then we've got the braids. And what's really important, we don't blob it on. We just work it around the model. Because we really only want it to go in the recesses. We don't want to leave any part of it with a horrendous looking dark blue area we just want to shade the pink so work your way around it i'll do this off cam let it dry and then we'll come back and start to highlight it because i think this model's starting you know there's lots of little bits left to do it but it's starting to come together and it's starting to look look quite cool make sure that drakenhof nightshade is properly dry before we kind of think about the next step we're just going to take that scream of pink I'm just going to reinstate some of these areas. I'm going to turn it this way around to show you that you can use the shape of the model in some instances to just get the get that scream of pink back in place. It's nice and simple, but just gives us the chance to have a much brighter pink on the tail which is kind of more reflective of the box art and kind of fits in with the whole theme of the different contrast on this model of course we'll put some more layers in later just to brighten it up and then when it comes to the the braids again we're looking to follow the model where we can I'm just going to clean my brush a little bit because the the tip had got a little bit square Yeah, we can follow the model, we just want to paint through there. I'll show you here. What we want to do is we just want to leave the Drakenhof nightshade in the gap. So all we're doing is we're going to reinstate the scream of pink like that. And we'll just do this all the way around. If the braid is hidden and you can't really see it, then don't fight against, you know, fight the model to, to get it painted. Because it's in shadow, it's not going to have a highlight. So just... Work your way around all the braiding like that, and then we'll come back and we'll start to highlight it up and, and really help it pop like the hair is. Once we've finished reinstating that scream of pink, we're going to take some pink horror. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same kind of thing. Where we kind of take along the, the shape of the model. We're just going to go along and just highlight the kind of most prominent edges again from about halfway, and this gives us the chance then to really brighten up the tail area, make a little bit messy like I have in there. Then just go back in with some scream of pink just to just to tidy it all up. So that's the tail, I'm going to finish that off off cam. When it comes to the plaits at the front, we're going to do the same sort of thing. Whereby we follow the kind of shape of the model to start with. And then like we did before, we just want to highlight these pieces. Just kind of on the inside.
just work with your own model, get them all done like this, and we'll come back and have a look for a final highlight. And just to finish off the pink bits with a little bit of a flourish, just want to take some uh, Emperor's Children and just run this along the more pronounced areas, the sharpest areas. The same for on the braids at the front, really. Just want to use the shape of the model. Down there, you can see it's just sharpened, pointed out a little bit more. And then we'll work a little bit into the into the braids as well. Again, stick into the kind of the middle. And we're looking at the kind of the lower part here. So we're not going to go as high as into there we're just going to kind of go about halfway let's build that highlight nicely so there we are i'll finish these off off cam and we'll come back and i think we shall do the gold next so to base the gold areas we're going to use some retributor armor and this is a real straightforward step you're probably going to need to use two coats because we're painting over a, a dark area so just take your time. If you're not sure which bits are going to be gold, then check the box art. And then just work your way around. So we've got all the bits of armor. We've got some trinkets here. Again, taking your time not to paint onto things you've already finished. We've got this part on the tail. And then with lastly, we've got the all the braids. Well, we've got this bit of armour in there, but we've got all these braids here. Which again, taking our time to complete so that we don't get any paint over the pink that we've just finished. So work your way around, get all these done. If it needs two coats, then give it the two. Otherwise we'll come back and then we'll, uh, we'll shade them next. Once that gold is done, just take some Reichland Flesh Shade and we're looking to shade the gold using it, making sure we get into all the recesses. Now, one thing that's going to be really important with uh, with this Reichland Flesh is we don't let it settle. So if I turn that and I, I place the model like that, obviously gravity is going to pull the wash down. What you'll start to see is it'll start to gather in these bits, which is okay, but we just want to keep an eye on it and make sure that it doesn't pull too much. And the easiest way of doing that is make sure that we don't actually have too much on the brush to start with. So take your time with this. Again, we're looking for all the bits we've just painted gold. Being really careful not to go over anything that we've already finished. And if you think about what I just said about the Reichland Flesh Shade, it's actually not too bad if it happens on this bit, because this bit's underneath, it's in the shadow, so we can afford perhaps a little bit more Reichland Flesh Shade on this bit, just to kind of really shade down. So of course the other bits we've got to do, we've got the bracelet there, this on the tail, just work your way around the model, everything you've just painted gold, pop some Reichland Flesh Shade on, and then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll highlight it all up next. Once that Reichland Flesh Shade is dry, you can see that it's just made the gold red. It hasn't actually settled anywhere, so it's really important that you don't throw it on wildly. So we're just going to highlight some of this gold now. And again, really key that we don't put too much paint on the brush. So it's a liberator gold. We're just kind of moving into the most raised areas like that. So you can see that it just gives a little bit of shine to the gold. If you need to pop a, another, quote, uh, another coat on then, then you can. Just work it in. It's quite a large area that we're highlighting with this Liberator Gold, because if you look at the box art, the, the gold is, is quite a bright gold. And then for the edges, we just want to run a brush along those edges and obviously this detailing in here as well. Nice and simple, nice and straightforward. 
So there you are, work your way around all the gold, highlighting it like that. And then once that's done, we're really getting into it now. So I think what we'll do is we'll do the horns next. To get the bone started, we're going to take some wraith bone. Um, I'm just going to paint this on the on the horns. So you can see straight away, because it's gone over black, that it's not covering very well. So just get a get a good base coat on there. We're going to do a blend with um, with contrast paints for this. Uh, so to show you how you can get some really nice looking blends and, and replicate the bone, sorry, the, the, the box art quite quick. So work this around all the horns and we're gonna paint the teeth this color as well. Um, so don't forget, you're gonna need uh, two, maybe three, depending on how thin you do your paint. Uh, real key, make sure it dries between going through and, and doing each coat as well, because what you don't want to happen is for you to pull off drying paint, which will leave a, a really uh, nasty mark in there. And you also don't want too much paint on your brush at once. Being careful whilst you uh, approach those bits you've already finished. So there we are, I'm going to finish the rest of this off camera, give it its second coat and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do a really simple blend and then we'll highlight it as well so that we can replicate the box art. Now that we've got that wraith bone dry, next thing I want to do is cover the entirety of the horn with some skeleton horde contrast paint. Now I want to be quite sparing with this and obviously be careful you don't go over bits you've already finished. We just want to keep the majority of that skeleton hoard towards the top. We also don't want it to really pool too badly on the miniature because if it pools it just it just makes things look quite messy. So make sure you cover all of the horn in the skeleton hoard and then make sure it's properly dry before uh, we go back to it. Take a little bit away there because it looks like it's pooling a little bit. So there we are. I'm just going to let that dry. I'll do the other one off cam and uh, then we'll come back and we look at how we just darken that bit there whilst getting a nice smooth blend on it. Once that skeleton hoard is dry, we're going to take some wild wood and we're going to paint it at the top here. Being careful not to get it on any of the blue we've already painted. I'm going to do it both sides. Pretty evenly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm then going to start to draw that wildwood down into the horn. Both sides. Just like that. And then that's given us a nice nice little blend through into the skeleton hoard. If you find that, you know what, it's not quite looking the way I want it to, just pop a bit more wildwood on there. And then you can start to blend that through. Just like that. And that actually looks quite quite nice for a blend. So I'll do the other one off cam and then we'll come back when it's all dry. Once we've made sure that that's all dry, you can see there that we've got uh, a nice blend going on. It's not perfect, but you know, we're not sat here for hours blending it in. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to highlight this and, and in the main we want to follow the shape of the model. So this is Wraithbone. So what we'll, you'll notice is that the model on the box art, the horns get lighter the closer uh, to the bottom they get, which is why we've gone for dark up top. But the highlight stays the same all the way through. Uh, and the reason the highlight stays the same all the way through is it just reflects the sharpness of the horns. So you can see there, I'm just taking a little bit of wraith bone, just following the line where, where you can. So for example, on this part here, you can just run 
the brush along and it'll catch those sharp edges let's work in there like that okay so just do that all the way around the horns that'll give you that nice highlight and then we'll come back we'll start working the face next as we move on to the head the first thing we want to do is get the get the ears painted so I'm just going to take some Cadian flesh tone for that and I'm going to paint these up and you can see it's just this is a layer paint so it's not covering fantastically well uh, but what I want to make sure is that one I don't get it over anything I've already finished and two that when I actually get it onto the, the face itself that it just you know it blends okay it's not you know a, a, a smooth smooth blend but just a a decent transition there for the ears. So do this on both ears, both sides, and just follow the box art if you're not 100% sure on how uh, this is supposed to look. And then we'll come back. Probably going to need to put two coats on, so make sure you do that as well. And then we'll come back and, and have a look where we are at shading and highlighting that. So take some Reichland Flesh Shade to shade down the Cadian flesh tone we've just uh, put on. Not too much of it because we don't want to darken it too much. Just want to make sure it settles in the recesses and, and definitely settles in the kind of that soft tissuey membrane part of the sphyrinx. So I'll let that dry and we'll highlight it next. When that Reichland flesh shade is dry, we just want to highlight the ears a little. I'm going to use some Kislev flesh for that. Just to highlight the edges. You can see there, it's really easy to do. Just use the, use the shape. See that's, Reichland's not quite dry all the way in. Let's me rush in, make sure it is dry before you uh, before you start getting involved and do the same on the other side so we are finish that off cam that's them dry and we'll get the main part of the face done next so first thing up I want to shade the face so I'm gonna use Drakenhof nightshade for this what's really important is that I'm not using too much on the brush at one time you should be able to see there in the shot that actually it's fairly thin as well We want to run this into the skin colour we've got at the back there because that'll just help it blend a little. And then the other place uh, with the Dragon Knight shade, the, the whiskers here, I just want to add a bit more Dragon Hoff to them because they are a little darker as they tend to grow out. And don't forget, you've also got the kind of the bottom of the mouth here as well where it's open. So work your way around that slowly. Uh, I'm probably going to give these whiskers a couple more coats of Draken off just to darken them down and then we'll come back and we'll start to highlight it. So the first highlight once that Drakenhof nightshade is dry is going to be Celestra Grey and we're going to look for the most prominent part of the face here. So leave that Drakenhof in any recesses you come up against. There's quite a lot of wrinkles on the face of this one, which says perhaps this mine stealer is a bit old, has been around a while, busy stealing people's minds. Let's just pop that in that on just to build up the luminosity a little bit on the face, and then we'll come back once that's all dry with some more. Uh, it might be worth highlighting out some of these a little as well, just to kind of help them blend in with with what's going on. And the next highlight for the face is going to be Ulthuan Grey and again what we're doing here is we're looking for those, those sharpest edges using the shape of the model where we can just to help us place these highlights in the right area. Face is starting to come together now. Make sure we've got some darker colours in the recesses. So 
So work your way around the face, pretty much like we've done there. Make sure you're happy with it. And once you are, don't go too far with it because you don't want to overly subscribe the model with the uh, with the Ilthuan grey because it'll just be a little too bright otherwise. So just something like that's what we're looking for. Okay, now when we come back, uh, we'll do the eyes next. So we're going to do the eyes and the gems exactly the same as this. So we're going to take some white scar and we're going to paint this over the eyes. So we've got the normal eyes in the head or where you'd expect to find eyes. And then you've got the third eye at the top of the head there, which I'm going to assume is what the Spheranx uses to steal people's mind. And we've also got some gems around the model, and I want to do these the same, so that they're they're uh, representative of the way this beast draws its power. So all I'm doing is just popping that white scar over the gems as well. So let that dry. If you need two coats, do, and then we'll come back and we'll get them glowing next. Now, once that white scar is dry, we're going to take some ethermatic blue and just paint it over the areas where we've used white scar. So this is a really easy, really simple way of getting really nice effect. Just like that. And you can see the glows there. Do the same for the gems. Make sure you put a good amount of ethermatic blue on them. And then let it dry. If you need to put a bit more on once it's dry, you can. You see there I've put a little bit much on, so all I'm going to do is clean my brush off and just take a little bit away and add a little, little more back in. So there you are, you can let all that dry. And then when we come back, we've just got little bits and pieces to do with the tongue, the claws, and this Mind Stealer 3 ranks is done. Let's start to wrap up the model lens. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the leather straps. So, base for the leather straps is a little bit of Rhinox hide. And this is as simple as just painting it on, being careful not to obviously go over anything you've already done or finished so far. So that's a nice, easy, straightforward one. So get that done, then we'll come back and highlight them a little. The highlight for the straps is uh, a little bit of Mornfang brown, and all we're going to do is just going to paint this on either side, leaving the the darker brown in the middle, just like that, and it gives you a nice pop and a nice richness to the leather. Nice and easy, nice and straightforward. We'll uh, have a look at doing the claws next. So the claws are nice and simple. What we want to do is we take some of bad and black and just re-establish the base coat on them where we may have dry brushed over. Nice and simple. Take your time though. You don't want to paint over all your hard work uh, that you've done. So get that finished and then we'll come back and highlight them next. Again, okay, those claws highlighted is really simple as well. So a little bit of mechanic is standard grey. And all we're going to do is we're just going to run it over those sharp edges that are designed by the wonderful uh, model makers at Games Workshop. Nice and simple, really straightforward. So we've just got the tongue left. And then this... Uh, Spheranx is ready to go cause chaos on a war cry board. So I'm going to base the tongue with some corn red. Now you should be really careful doing this that you don't go in and go over anything that you've already, fin already finished. Nice and simple, nice and straightforward. And there we go. So just let that dry and we'll give it a little highlight next. For the highlight, we're just going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet just on the front there and along some of the sides in there. Just like that. 
and this mine stealer ceramic is complete so paint the rock to match the rest of your war cry rock paint the base to match the rest of your war cry scenery or your army and then it's good to go let's have a look at this on the turntable next so there we have it this mine stealer sphere ranks is ready for the war cry battle board i really hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please leave a like and a comment down below it really does help me improve the channel for you guys to make sure that you're getting the content that you want like i said there are a few more steps in this because it is a centerpiece model but i hope you agree it looks really really good and whilst there are a few extra steps it's quite straightforward to get a really good effect don't forget, you can see all my recommended equipment in the description down below, and you can also get up to 20% of all your wargaming needs from Goblin Gaming if you're in the UK or the EU. Thanks again for watching, see you next time.